Do you irrigate your yard? Or has it been hot and dry for more than three or four days and your grass is going brown? Or did you mow it and suddenly it turned brown almost immediately? Or are you seeing spots like this? If so, this video is for you. I am going to go over what wetting agents are. How they are more efficient to help your grass survive the summer. I'm going to go over the chemistry of it. I'm actually going to show you how they work and make your irrigation, the rainfall, more efficient. And it will also help your grass come out of that brown, which is essentially a defense mechanism that grass has during summer called summer dormancy. This will help you get your grass back. So let's get started. Okay, pretty simple experiment of how wetting agents work. This is Hydro Holder, and I've, I actually have used that this year. And so far, so good. And we've had a little bit of drought, uh, not a whole lot this spring. Those of you on the East Coast, particularly the Mid-Atlantic, knows we've got a lot of rain, but now it's getting July, and after July 4th, things get real, as you may know. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this car wash sponge, which is slightly hydrophobic anyway. It's one of these strong ones. It's actually, a, I think it's a tile brush. So anyway, or tile sponge. I'm going to paint mm -hmm, hydro holder on one side, and then the other side is not going to have any hydro holder. This is going to represent the penetrant and the hydrant cap capabilities, if you will, of a wetting agent. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put it right here. And we're going to grab this. I'm going to take some red water. And then I'm going to put it on the side that did not get the wetting agent and see how it's bubbling up there i can actually okay there's that's those adhesive and cohesive forces holding that water together in the bubble this is what a, a you know a teardrop looks like those are those adhesive and cohesive forces at work so it won't penetrate that sponge and you can see watch this i'll actually take it whoop, right off the sponge so that's what it does to your soil watch what happens with the a wetting agent on the other side. It goes right in. Okay. That's what's going to work. That's how that works. And that water you're applying to the soil penetrates and actually goes right in. So I've got water going into that sponge on this side. On the other side, hardly anything. Okay. I can actually take it, brush it off. You can see the difference. So that kind of illustrates what you're talking about as far as the penetrant of getting down into a hydrophobic soil versus and the hydrant of actually holding it. So it is the cohesive water that is plant available. I need you to understand those principles as we get deeper into this because I really want you to understand what wetting agents do and how much they can help you with summer survival and bringing your grass back or preventing it from going into dormancy and making your irrigation and when you get a rainstorm more efficient. What often happens during, nearly all the time happens during the summer, is as you get a hydrophobic condition in your soil. What happens to soil particles is oftentimes they get an organic sort of coating on it that causes the charge that actually repels water. You probably have seen this. If you have irrigated or watered some grass and maybe put a decent amount of water on it with a garden hose, you saw it just simply running off to the side. That is the hydrophobic condition of that soil. And that's what happens when it gets dry, particularly during the summer when you need it most. Wetting agents help this. There is actually two different types of wetting agents or wetting agent properties, if you will. They actually are combining. Most wetting agents are combined into two, these two groups. They used to be two separate. That is, the one is a penetrant and the other is a hydrant. I'm going to explain to you what the difference between those two are. Penetrant breaks down the adhesive and cohesive forces of water just slightly to where they are a little less and it allows them to penetrate into that soil. That's why it's called a penetrant. It doesn't break it down too much, but just enough to where it can work its way into that soil. Then you have hydrants, which hydrants are a polymer that remember what I was talking about as far as that organic material, that organic coating on the soil particles. It attaches itself to that organic coating 
and attracts the water to it. So that water holds that soil more effectively and more efficiently. So majority of wetting agents, quality wetting agents, are a combination of penetrant, allows it to get into the soil by breaking down its surface tension, and a hydrant by coating that soil particle with that organic material, changing the charge of it, and attracting that water molecule. Back in the early 90s, I was working at Prestwood Country Club in Cary, North Carolina, in a hot rally sun, and we would, every afternoon, go out and hand water greens, spot to spot to spot. Practically every green had a localized dry spot. Because of that coating on the soil particle, as I was talking about earlier, Ron Gilmore, who was a golf course superintendent, put out a product called Primer at the time. Prior to putting it out, practically every single green, somebody, only me and a few other <laughs> schlubs working our way through college, had to pull a hose off the cart, put it in the quick connect, and water the green. After the primer select was put out, I hardly ever touched the hose almost two or three days after it was put out, and very rarely afterwards. Primer was probably the best I had ever seen, and one of the best that I have seen in 35 years. I've also used Cascade. Now, we're getting into the type of wetting agents and products you can use. I can tell you that Primer, now it's called Primer Select, it's actually better than it was way back in the 90s, it's kind of hard for a homeowner to get. In addition, it is rather pricey. I've used Primer, I've used Cascade, and it's hard to find them online. I think I found one place where Primer Select is online. If I do find it, I'll leave it down below, but I can tell you it's kind of pricey. But if you're putting in a lot in water, that may not be a bad move. So, talked about Primer. Here's a chart, and I'll leave this article from the Golf Course Management. That is the official publication of the Golf Course Superintendents Association, one of, the, one of the publications that I cite in many of my videos. I'll leave this article down below, but I'll give you this chart. And you can see here, this is, a, the, this is how much the water holding capacity at the soil is compared to all these other wetting agents and their commercial golf course wetting agents, and I have used some of them. The aqua crawls I use, it's a good product. The primer select, in my opinion, is probably the best, if not one of the best. I think it's even got Cascade, which I've also used on it as well. But you see one here called H2O Maximizer. I'm not getting anything in the world for this, <laughs> to say this. But the H2O Maximizer has a very high water holding capacity. It's about $116 for a two and a half gallon jug, which is a little big for some of you. I'm gonna give you maybe that hydro holder if you guys more of a casual uh, person taking care of your yard, but you guys that are high on high end or putting out a high water bill, I would recommend the H2O Maximizer because of the data in this chart. It has actually increased the water holding capacity and memory surge. You can see it here by about 15% on its soil. It is a very good product. You can get it from r, &R Products. I will leave a link to it down below. There again, it's $116, goes out four ounces per thousand square feet, and I would start that regimen in May, maybe you guys in Texas and Arizona might want to start that sometime in April because you get dry. Ideally, you want to start putting out wetting agents 30 days before the onset of stress. For those of you that are already in stress, will it do you good? Oh, absolutely it will. Because what happens is, is now your grass is in dormancy. Some of that is heat related, but most of that is going to be water related. I have seen, this is why I want to make this video, more grass loss to water and I have seen everything else, and I would even go further enough to say everything combined. Water is by far, water management is the most important thing you can do to your yard. And using these wetting agents actually takes some water off the soil surface too, so it kind of helps a little bit, a little bit, with a little bit of fungicide too, or at least fungal control, because you, you, that water penetrates rather than sitting on the surface and helping those spores reproduce. But it's more about plant available water and getting that water down in the soil, reducing that hydrophobic condition. Now, the Hydro Holder product, I'm using it for the first time this year, and I'm going to go ahead and include it on the wedding, on the, on the Amazon storefront. I can't remember what it is, but it is a very reasonably priced and reasonably sized um, container for you guys. Whenever I make a recommendation, I try to be cognizant of the size of the container. I've done the math on the, on the H2O Maximizer. Two and a half gallon jug, if you had 8,000 square feet, it's going to last you about two years and a half, okay? If you start in May, end in September, for example. So that's not bad, and it will keep for three years. The Hydra Holder, 
you put it out once a year, I think maybe twice. I can't remember the, but that one's not a bad one. If you just want something that's a little bit lower price point, maybe not quite as much to where you have to store it. But the H2O Maximizer, what I have found is the best combination of price and efficacy and performance comparable to what I use on golf course greens. So those are the two that I recommend. Now there's another. And you see this a lot on YouTube, and that is using Dawn dishwashing detergent. Let me speak to that for just a moment. Remember what I talked about as far as the hydrants and those polymers that help that water attach to the soil part. Yes, really what Dawn dishwashing detergent is the penetrant, only penetrant, meaning it does break down the cohesive forces of water. That's how soap works. And folks, it's a soap. I understand there's a lot of guys on YouTube think it's some key thing or some secret thing. There's a lot of, quite frankly, bullshit like that on YouTube. <laughs> I try to get rid of it on this channel. But the thing is, all you're doing is really penetrating the soil. You're not getting the hydrant elements, which is what you, what you really need is that water, a plant available water of that soil to hold the water. That's why I like the H2O Maximizer because it has a very high water holding capacity. The hydro holder, I don't have any data on that. I only say my personal experience so far. Early July is actually better than the hydrotane. You hear a lot of that one on, on YouTube. I'll be honest with you, I used that last year and I didn't see anything out of it. And I've seen other YouTubers actually say it didn't work for them either. Don't recommend hydrotane, but there's a lot of folks pushing it. Back to the Dawn dishwashing detergent. Yes, it will help penetrate in the soil. However, it's a soap. It's designed to wash off oils and waxes. You have oils and waxes, particularly waxes on your leaf blade that not only repel, it's actually part of the fungal defense of the grass, but it also, if you wash away those waxes or diminish those waxes in some way, you can actually desiccate, meaning dry up the leaf blade. That's not what it's designed to do. You wanna put it on your yard as a hack. Whatever you wanna put on your yard, your business, I support you 100%, I'll bring the beer <laughs> and let, help you do it. But don't use Dawn dishwashing detergent because it is not going to help plant available water. It will allow it to penetrate and likely will take a lot of those, some of those waxes and some of those oils, those essential oils in the leaf, in the plant and wash them off. You don't want to do that just to save a few bucks. It's kind of silly. And most of these hacks that you see in these homegrown stuff online is silly. And you can screw things up pretty well, and you're really not saving that much money. And your time is money in many cases. And there's the cat. So anyway, <laughs> but I had to speak to the Dawn dishwasher. Go ahead and start irrigating your yard, okay? To get it, if you want it that dormancy, one of the strategies I might recommend is just do it in the front yard. That way you're not really all that committed to a big water bill. You want to put out in the neighborhood about a quarter ounce, quarter ounce a day if you guys are watering. If you get some rain, you can also subtract that off and maybe skip a few days. I always tell people, start off with a quarter inch of water if they're watering their yard and then back off from there. It, I have seen many people, and there's been a couple comments, and, and had one guy, I think, from up uh, up northeast said, hey, I, my calculations say 0.17 inches, uh, 0 0.17 inches of water per day. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm kind of giving you like where to start. So if you start putting out a quarter inch of water per day and then find out you got to back it off and back it off, that is what I calculated water loss on a green during July, actually late June in Raleigh, North Carolina. And it's going to vary to pace, depending on how much sun you get. I got this maple tree. Don't need a whole lot of water here on this tall fescue. Could even do species. I'll talk species here in just one second. I'm, I'm, I'll talk about summer dormancy just real quick. But anyway, it's going to depend on species, how much rain you get, how much sun you get, a lot of factors. That's why I say start off with a quarter inch. Then if you find out it's too much, back it off a little bit. Or some of you out west may find you need more than that. So at least that way you're starting some. Or you can use a strategy of kind of, and this is what I do on some of my yards, particularly in July, is I just pay attention very closely to the rain and try to get at least an inch and a half of water on that yard per week. So those are some guidelines on irrigation, a little bit beyond the scope of what this video is. I'm talking about wetting agents, but I'm giving you some guidance in using those wetting agents and watering your yard. Now, as far as grass species, and I will say this, most of you guys are cool season grasses that are watching this video. Some of you guys warm season grasses out west. You know, this is going to be helpful a little bit. 
One thing about the dormancy, and, and Virginia Tech, I'll, I'll leave this article down below, but Virginia Tech did a really good, had a great picture. You need to understand with tall fescue and ryegrass, they have better drought tolerance, mostly because it takes them longer to get in the summer dormancy than bluegrass. Bluegrass goes into summer dormancy rather quickly, but in the reverse, coming out of summer dormancy, and you can see here, Virginia Tech took a picture two weeks later, this is bluegrass, when in the dormancy, boom, it's out in two weeks when it had ample water and was able to come out of that dormancy. It will come out faster than tall fescue or ryegrass. Tall fescue and ryegrass, I'm just kind of giving you guys a heads up. It's a little bit more of an uphill push to get it out of dormancy because it takes longer to get out of dormancy. But using a wetting agent will definitely help. that. Some of these claims of saving 50% on water is total bullshit. This not necessarily will save you water. I will say on wetting agents, been using these for over 30 years. It's not like we're running irrigation heads for 20 minutes, we cut out a wetting agent, now we're running for 15. No, it does make that water get in there more efficiently and it will hold water better. It not necessarily will save water, but it will make things more efficient. And it might help you back off a little bit, but always be careful because there again, I've always seen water. I, I've seen more grass loss by water. Than grass. So anyway. Wedding agents, and a couple other things and thrown in there too. So anyway, I'm agronomist Greg Phillips, and I hope this has been helpful. Pretty sure to like if you like and subscribe. I'm science-based. That's why I have that's why I have work cited, and I try to kind of show you a little bit of mis <laughs> a Mr. Wizard of how things work so you understand. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Thanks.